all on this computer. Hello everyone, welcome to the 19th episode of Let's Talk Inclusion. My name is uh, Mudabina Chakraborty. I'm an inclusive education consultant based in India and of course uh, the founder of i Inclusion. Friends, this is the last episode of the Autism Awareness Month. Although uh, spreading awareness about autism cannot be confined to a month, and we do it all around the year through our talk shows, webinars, Facebook live shows, blogs, and much more. My guest today is a person who is uh, endeavoring tirelessly to spread awareness and uh, create acceptance through her social media blogs for the last uh, five years or so. She's my uh, dear friend, uh, Pronita Banerjee, uh, joining us today from Dundee, Scotland. Hi, Pronita. Welcome to Let's Talk Inclusion. Hello, Manavina. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Pronita, in this digital world, a blog is uh, more like a journal. And it becomes more impactful when parents share their stories and their anecdotes through these time capsules. And you have been doing this exceptionally well. Uh, we will come to that later in our discussion. But before that, uh, could you please tell our viewers about your life and uh, work? Hi, so I'm Pranita and uh, I've got two boys. And about 18 years back, we emigrated to Scotland from uh, India because mainly because of my husband's work. He's a doctor. And uh, my firstborn was, uh, my, he, he was born in India. When we came, he was two years old. And I, start, I used to work in Times of India when I was in India. And when we came to Glasgow, my, we had a second son. His name is Aryan. And he was born in 2006. And we realized that he had a lot of additional needs and he would need a lot of care and support. That is when I gave up my job to become his sole carer, uh, prime carer. And uh, later on, when he started going to school and things like uh, I, because of my journey with him and what I'd learned and what he had taught me, I decided to retrain and I went back to college and I specialized in autism and did a course of working with children in schools. So right now I'm working in a primary school over here in Scotland, Dundee. And like I said, we've got two boys and kind of settled in Dundee. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. Uh, so uh, Pranita here, uh, I would like to add something uh, to your uh, whatever you said now. Uh, so, my dear friends, Pronita uh, is a proud mother of two exceptionally talented boys. Her elder one, Avijo, is just 20 and has already authored three internationally acclaimed books on mathematics. And he's an undergraduate student in the University of Cambridge and is a true genius. Pronita's younger one, Aryan, is a superhero. And Pranita often mentions uh, in her blogs that she is equally proud of her two boys. Aren't you, Pranita? Of course, definitely. I'm equally proud of both of them. Like Monobina mentioned, my elder one, uh, he gets a lot of accolades from everyone because of his, he's a maths genius. <laughs> and he apparently has a IQ of 161. Uh, and he is really good. And like you said, he's got three books. But an Aryan obviously is on the lower end of this, like he's not high achieving. But to us as a family, we can see the effort that goes into every little small things that he achieves, every barrier that he breaks down. So the effort that he and he puts into all the things that he does. And at the end of it, when he achieves something, I mean, we are so proud. And his big brother is so proud of all his achievements. They might seem very small or trivial to other people, but to us, even things like eating a new thing or uh, tasting a new food or doing something, you know, being able to regulate his emotions in an environment which is not conducive, things like that. To us, they are big, big milestones 
Uh, so let's come to today's topic. Uh, today's topic is uh, parenting an exceptional child. Uh, Pranita, I remember the opening sentence of your Autism Awareness Day post on social media this year. You said having a child on the severe end of the spectrum can be hugely challenging, but equally rewarding. Uh, could you please elaborate on this? Yes, uh, but before that, I would just like to say a few things. Like I started writing about Aryan because when he was about uh, five, six years back, because I realized that he doesn't have a voice. He is not non-verbal, but he's limited to a few single words and he doesn't have a voice. So, and I, because I live, we live in Scotland and most of our family and friends and Indian American, you know, spread over the world uh, and they all love Aryan to bits. So I wanted to kind of, and because Ognijo has a, gets a lot of media attention, gets a lot of publicity, I was like, there, I have got an equally gorgeous boy who cannot talk himself or tell the world how amazing he is. So let me start talking about him and become his voice. And that is how I started uh, writing about him. It's a very and it's my blog is mainly read by family and friends and it was all you know very small things about him the everyday achievements or things that we struggled with and things like that and so uh that has kind of built up and every year during this time obviously it's the autism awareness month i always kind of reflect on what our journey has been with him and like I said, I'm not one of those people who would like to say that life is a bed of roses. It's definitely not there. It is hugely challenging to have a child who is on the severe end of the spectrum. Also having a lot of other associated impairments and other diagnoses is also because RNS has got Down syndrome and learning difficulties. So it is hugely challenging. Day-to-day -day life is hugely challenging. But at the same time, it is very, very rewarding because uh, he has kind of changed all our perspectives. He has changed the way we live our life for a better sense and for the better way. And it is very rewarding because he has shown us a life, a way of living, which we wouldn't have experienced without him. And uh, I was curious to know, uh, about the kind of support services he received in Scotland um, uh, from Aryan school, maybe. Do you receive any uh, support uh, service uh, like therapies and all from Aryan school? Yes. Um, I'll, before that, I'll say like when Aryan started going to school, you know, there's a big debate in this country also whether a child with additional needs should be going to a mainstream school uh, where he or she will receive, you know, one-to-one -one support or does he or she need to go to a specialized school, you know, what we call a special additional special needs school. We did send our into a mainstream school, like in our area, which, which is a very good school, but very quickly we realized that the school, it's no fault of the school, but, you know, it did have the resources or were not being able to meet our needs the way we would have liked it. And in some ways, Aryan was regressing. And so within a month or so, we made a decision. We've got a fabulous school. You know, we are very lucky that we stay in a city which has got a very, uh, a school which has got a very high, you know, it's got a national accreditation from the Autism Society. And it is very well known. So he goes to that school, Kings Park. And even within Kings Park, he is, you know, they, have, they are divided into a primary section, a secondary section, and a ESAN, which has got enhanced support needs, where mainly children with autism, they go to that department. And it is fantastic, like, it is fantastic in the sense, like, all staff is specialized in uh, dealing with children with autism, and also he gets all sorts of therapies, like starting from physiotherapy to OT, to speech and language therapy, to even things like dog therapy, you know, which aryan has been doing recently. So they cater to the whole person, you know. 
Is it a state-run school or an independent? It is a state-run school. Everything is free. We oh. don't have to pay anything for this, uh, which I realize is not the same case in India. Yeah. But uh, yes, he gets like simple things like him even getting school transport. Like we get a bus which comes up and he's got an escort with him or a taxi which will come pick up Aryan from home. He goes to school. Uh, during the whole school day, they kind of follow, he follows kind of the same curriculum, which other children in mainstream are following, but obviously it is tailored to his individual level. So uh, he would be doing the same curriculum topic, but in a different way and a different setting. Uh, so, and all the, and, and in this particular school, NHS is also like based in the same premises. So he can also have access to the school nurse and uh, all the rest of it, you know, all his medical needs are also catered to for like simple things like Aaron has a phobia about going into hospitals and all because from the time he was very young, you know, he didn't, he has been through lots of medical interventions and all and he doesn't like going into a hospital. So uh, when his bloods need to be taken or something, the school nurse will do it and because in that he's much more comfortable, you know, all the school nurse will come into his class to do it, to take his bloods and all. And because it is an environment where Aaron is much more comfortable in, you know, it is not a hassle to me or I don't need to take him to the hospital, you know, simple things like that. So no, they cater to everything. So nice, so nice. I was curious to know about this because in uh, developing nations like India, support services and uh, different therapies for neurodivergent children are very limited. And even if they are available in bigger cities, they cost an arm and a leg. Such expensive services are unaffordable by many, even if they want. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, what one of the reasons we have continued to stay in Scotland, though I love Indian, my heart is in India and so is Aryan. Aryan loves India too. But uh, what is because of the schooling, you know, the kind of schooling that Aryan is getting, because I realize that is not possible, you know, in India, it's all under one roof. And uh, yes, it's like world-class support that he's getting under one roof. So what the services available uh, in the last one year of pandemic during the lockdown period and all? In, during the COVID period, what has happened in UK is uh, we had small hubs in all all over the, I mean, all over the country, and for people of uh, key workers, kids, and some children who are very vulnerable, so they had a hub in a particular, especially high school, you know, uh, where maybe kids from that area were coming. Mm -hmm. Aryan school because it's a addition needs school, and because they realized that children like Aryan won't be comfortable going to some place else. Kings Park itself became a hub. And because Aryan's needs are quite severe, throughout the lockdown, and maybe that is what has kept us sane, he got at least two days of school, you know, when, when it was more of play. And obviously he couldn't do a lot of stuff which he would be doing otherwise, but at least he had that continuity of routine in his life which gave him, because everything else was closed, you know, we were in total lockdown and all other services like his after school club and all the other various activities that he does, you know, like going for trampoline, going for swimming, everything has been stopped. So this, but this kind of link, at least going to school for two days a week was a lifesaver for him, for us, for everyone. So no, he has been getting that support and it was with the same kind of same bubble, we call it a bubble, meaning the same support staff, you know, who know Aryan and the same, his teacher. So it was with the same group that he's used to, his own team. So that has been really, really good. Uh, do you work with the same school? No, I don't. You can't work in a school where your child is working. <laughs> but uh, no, I work in other, another school, but yeah. I keep watching the videos you post on social media. Would you like to show some of the videos today? Definitely. I'll try. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, I can. But I don't think I can show the video. This is like, 
that's him ice skating and wait. I, I don't know why the videos are not coming. It's only it's coming as pictures. I will be posting uh, a few videos uh, just after this uh, program is over. And uh, friends, this is a pre-recorded version of Let's Talk Inclusion. For the first time, we are doing this because uh, we have to uh, we have to work as for the convenience of our superhero. <laughs> yeah, like. Uh, you can, uh, there are a few videos which I show, you know, like, uh, like his swimming mm -hmm. and he does, I mean, I would say like, Aryan, that is what as parents we try and even like in, we are that way lucky, like the Scottish society and Dundee especially is a lovely place. And he gets to experience everything which his neurotypical peer would so he goes swimming he like i said he goes to the trampoline sessions he used to before the COVID period you know he has a lovely after school club where he does all sorts of activities and and as a mom i always keep on clicking him so we have thousands of videos to watch so nice so nice and i send those who uh have joined late uh, to uh, watch our video let me just tell them that Kronika writes blogs about uh, her child Aryan. And uh, Kronika, remember one of your blogs where you mentioned that as a mom, you felt equally proud the day Aryan ate a cupcake out of the blue as you did the day uh, Omi Jo won the gold medal and got the perfect score in the International Maths Olympiad. So if you could just uh, tell our viewers about uh, those two incidents. Yeah, like obviously as a as a parent i was i'm very proud of my eldest boy but frankly what ognijo has achieved is on his own steam we haven't really obviously we have nurtured him and we have brought him up but uh, ognijo as far as academics are concerned i or his dad really didn't have an input up on it other than buying him books and you know and not saying no but he has achieved that on his own steam but where Aryan is concerned, we celebrate more, like I said, because each achievement, it's more like a family thing. And Aryan always, because of his Down syndrome and all, he, and because of his autism, his food intake is very limited. He will only eat, you know, five or six things he's eaten from when he was a child. He'll have rice and curry, but even that, it has to be presented in the same way I have been presenting it. You can't present it in a different way. He just won't eat. And he's never eaten a fish finger or a chicken nugget or a biscuit in his life. And because of his Down syndrome, he has this problem with his tongue also. So he doesn't, he can't like, he doesn't like any hard texture. So it has to be soft. And as you know, we, tra we used to travel extensively all over the world. And that was one of the major difficulties we faced because whenever we went abroad or even here when we went anywhere the first thing before planning anything I was like where can I get rice or where can I get the curry or will I get a kitchen where I can cook for him so that used to be a major hindrance you know for us so we've always like we're always trying to introduce him to new food but that takes years and years I remember my husband it took him about four years to make him eat a pizza and he has never, like I said, he's never had a biscuit or cupcakes or anything in his life, though I'm very fond of cakes and we always having cakes. Aryan loves cakes. For his birthday, he will have about five or six cakes, but he loves to blow the candle on them, but he has never ever tasted a cake in his life before that. So one day when, you know, there were some cup cupcakes lying and Aryan kept looking at me and like, I always do offer him a choice, even if I know he's going to say no. So when he was looking at the cupcake, I just showed it to him and said, like, Aryan, do you want the cupcake? And he just, you know, like reached out for it. And it was amazing. I was like, okay, fine. So I thought he'll just take it and then throw it on the ground. But he had a bite from it. And I was like, it was amazing. It was like, after so many years, this was so pleasing. Like, I took pictures. I started crying. I was like, and then he ate the whole cake. I had to feed it to him with a spoon, but he ate the whole cupcake. And it was amazing. And people who know Aryan know how every, like every single day for his whole life in school, he takes the same lunch, same packed lunch. So for him, even to try out these new things, you know, 
it's like to us, it is no less an achievement. You know, so many things, his sensory issues we, he had to overcome and so many things, you know, to achieve that and to be able to get that. To uh, me as a parent, it's no less than Ognijo getting that gold medal on that stage, world stage. So I was just uh, trying to log into Facebook so that I can uh, screen share and uh, show the videos. Uh, maybe I will do it later on. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Pranita, in India, of course, and also in some other developing countries, people really don't feel comfortable talking about autism or neurodiversity. There are some representations of the high functioning end of the spectrum. And the neurotypical world tends to think that autism is indeed a hidden disability. And if one works hard, one can match the expectations of the neurotypical uh, world. I invited a few very successful autistic persons in my show, but that representation was just a part, not the whole story. What is your opinion about it? Yes, this is something I'm really passionate about because when Aaron was very small, I'll tell you an incident, what happened. Like, you know, you know, every year we visit India, especially during the summer holidays. But uh, so the, there was this party that I went to and one, one of my acquaintances came to me. I had taken, obviously, I take Aaron everywhere. We take Aaron to everything. And she walked up to me and said, oh, I'm so sorry for you. And I was like, why is she feeling sorry for me? And you know, I didn't realize, I thought it was something to do with me. And then I realized that she was sorry for me because Arin was my son, you know. And obviously I was deeply hurt, I was angry. And then I realized, you know, then I started thinking about it because, you know, I wasn't in India, I hadn't thought about this before. Then I realized like, yes, you know, when I take Arin out to the shopping mall, so when I go out and about to his places, I don't see any other disabled, child so much they are not visible where are they and i was like i want Aaron to make friends so where are they what are they doing and slowly i realized you know like parents i don't blame them maybe it's because of society and the taboos like you said and it is hard bringing up a child with additional needs parents don't feel confident they're not confident and because of that you know like the children are not so visible and I was like very hurt and all and I said no it's not like this and nowadays when I go to India and when Arin comes with me you know I have parents walk up to me and say like uh, total strangers who have walked up to me and said like this is so good you know how do you do it I'm like what do you do you just do it. you plan a little bit obviously you make some provisions for certain things you know like practical things when you're taking a child out like you would for any other kid but I mean why he's my son I've got nothing to be ashamed of. I'm proud of him. So, yeah, it is inspiring. And, like, it is hard, I understand. But what I would say is the first thing to do is, uh, and to realize is, each child is unique. Each and every child is unique. And each child is uh, born with some good things, and but some needs. And our role as parents is to support them. And the sooner as parents we realize that, that, okay, fine, he's my son or daughter, and he might have additional needs, or he might be neurotypical, uh, not neurotypical, but he's my child, he, he might need support. The sooner the parents kind of admit to themselves that the child needs support and help, I think things will be a lot different. Now, I just uh, have logged in uh, to Facebook and um, opened Aryan's page. So let me just uh, share my screen here. Just a minute. Yeah. So can you see it, Pranita? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, so this is Aryan's page, Team Aryan Superhero. So yeah. he is actually a superhero to us and like like a that we, in fact, now everyone in school calls him a superhero and team Aryan because uh, I do believe it takes a village to raise a child. 
and uh, like like i said i'm eternally grateful to that's his uh, one of his staff support staff who is a professional dog trainer who's doing the dog therapy with him blair so he's got a whole team around him you know and outside school also like i said his after school club and the other places that he goes to for his football sessions and all so he's got a whole team so that's how the name came about team arian superhero <laughs> This is our Aryan. Can I just say a little bit about that, Monavina? Yeah, Aryan, like from from a child, you know, from when he was a child, he was petrified of dogs to the extent even in India when we went to India, you know, before we go to a friend's place, we always tell them like lock your dogs away and stuff like that this became particularly bad during the first lockdown because obviously we couldn't go anywhere and uh, but Aryan refused to step out of the house because everyone could only go for exercising and they were taking their dogs out good body body so uh, whenever i see Aryan, you have the smile i have the smile on my face so what happened was we asked the school and we told them like he's petrified of dogs and that is even you know he's getting housebound because he's refusing to even go for walks around the block and that's when they started uh, they have a school therapy dog in his school and they started like Blair started working with him that's Blair he started working with Aaron in school and then last just before christmas we decided to bring in buddy home and it's been amazing like Aaron has learned so much like and every day is an improvement 